Thanks for tuning in. This video is to show you what it's like to drive on the National Route 42 or Kokudo 42 in Japanese, departing from Hidaka Town, going through Yura, Hirogawa, and Iwasa Towns, and arriving in Aridagawa Town. I'll also introduce you to some of the interesting places along the route. I am speeding up most of the footages, but this trip in real life will take about 30 minutes. For those of you without the time to watch the entire video, the main points are the following. Around two and a half minutes into the video, I'll show you the famous Kokoguji Temple. Then, at around four minutes ten seconds, there's a segment about the orange vendor Hisa Koen while along the mountain pass. Finally, towards the end of the video, I'll show you what it's like to visit Yuasa Shoyu, a prestigious soy sauce house whose products have won the grand gold at Mondo Selection multiple times. I'll put the time links to each segment in the description below. Some background info about Route 42. It's one of the 459 national highways in Japan and runs between Kosai City, Shizuoka Prefecture and Wakayama City, Wakayama Prefecture. The entire stretch of the route is about 500 kilometers and I'm only covering a very short portion of it here. In Japan, highways including Route 42 are called Kokudo. They are different from expressways which are called Kosoku and have higher speed limits. In Wakayama Prefecture, Route 42 was practically the only path for drivers going between major cities for a long time. However, since the construction of Hangwa Expressway in the mid-1990s, it has been a matter of choice whether to take Route 42 or the Expressway. Route 42 is toll-free, but it goes up and down the mountains as you will see in the footages. And the Expressway is straight and fast, but it costs you something. If I'd gone to and from the same points as I did here using the Expressway, it would have cost me 470 yen, which is a bit more than $4, but I would have arrived in about half the time. Okay, so until we reach downtown Yura, allow me to play some music. I hope it's your cup of tea. Thanks for hanging in there. One thing before we get to Kokoguzi very quickly. This is the junction that you turn left at when you go to Shirasaki Coast. I've made a video about it a while ago. I'll put the link to it in the description below. And now, let's talk about our first place of interest in this video. This is the Monzen Junction, from which you can access a famous temple called Kokoguzi. Kokoguzi is known as the birthplace of Komso monks. Komsos are the monks of Zen Buddhism who travel and play the shakuhachi flute. They also wear a deep straw hat which signifies abandonment of ego and allows them to travel anonymously. The Komso culture began after Shinji Kakushin returned from his study in Hanzhou, China and became the first head priest of the temple in 1258. He brought with him four Chinese monks who played the bamboo flute, each of whom gained several disciples in Japan. Kokoguzi is also known as the birthplace of Kinzanze miso, a type of miso paste. This to me is significant because Kinzanze miso is known as the predecessor of Japanese soy sauce as we know it today. The sauce was discovered in the form of the liquid that accumulated in the process of making the miso paste. Mizukoshi Pass, locally known as Mizukoshi Toge, is a mountain road with its peak at an altitude of 180 meters, and it spans about 7 kilometers in Yura and Hirogawa towns. Along this pass, there are some places selling oranges. According to what I read, mountain regions are suitable for growing oranges because of the slopes. This is thanks to the optimal sunlight and water amounts. Firstly, the amount of sunlight will be abundant for obvious reasons, and secondly, the amount of water in the ground doesn't get unnecessarily high. If you have too much water around the orange trees, the fruit will taste watery instead of sweet. So it's better if the ground is a slope where the water kind of passes by quickly. This explains why the prefectures like Wakayama and Ehime are well-known orange producers in Japan. And now, here comes our second place of interest. Shortly before you reach the summit of the pass, there's an orange vendor called Hisa Koen. I've checked them out on the internet and they seem to have a good customer base, both locally and online through Amazon JP. So I stopped by to get some. This is a bag of four Hasaku oranges, which tasted amazing and only cost me a mere 100 yen, which is less than a dollar. You might realize this is outrageously cheap in a Japanese standard. In fact, in the same shop, the bags containing the same number of the same kind of oranges will cost five times as much just because they look better and are more presentable. 
I've grown up in Wakayama and around many farmers, and I've heard so many stories about how fruits and veggies aren't commercially valuable unless they look great. So I think what I see in this orange shop is an honest and responsible kind of approach to agriculture commerce. You know, because you're not wasting any products as a shopkeeper. It's great. By the way, the other day I harvested some oranges in my uncle's farm up in the mountains in Aridegawa town. Those were Kiyomi oranges and different from the Hassaku that I just showed you. I had my friend Valentine from Nigeria try some of these. I had the oranges and they were really, really sweet and soft, you know, easy to peel. They were really great and I hope to have more. The shop Hisa Koen has both Hasaku and Kiyomi, as well as some other kinds, including Unshu. Of course, oranges are seasonal produce, so Hasaku will be available from November to April, and Kiyomi from March to May, roughly speaking. But you know, it's already June, and I got some Hasaku today, so these are just rough estimates. But you get the idea, you don't get many of them in summer. Oh, and before I forget, can I please show you some views around Hisakoen on Mizuko's Pass? And back to music for about 45 seconds. Stick around, there'll be some food stuff afterwards. Okay now, this is Nashima Junction, a gateway to downtown Hirogawa. If you're hungry, there's a super good yakitori place called K-Market, who offer charcoal grilled chicken as cheaply as 100 yen per skewer. They grill in front of the shop, so the appetizing aroma will be immediately noticeable once you're in the vicinity. It's easy to locate them as they are right at the six-way junction called Showa in the center of town. Highly recommended. Yum yum. Okay, in a short while, we'll approach our final place of interest, Yuasa Shoyu. Now this place has a lot going on, so I'll start talking about it already. Yuasa Shoyu is an ultra-famous soy sauce house in Yuasa. One of their products has been winning the Grand Gold at the Belgian Food Award Monde Selection every year since 2006. While another product also won the same prize for 8 consecutive years until 2014. Here we go, Yuasa Shoyu is on your right. What's amazing is that they are so open to the customers and the community surrounding them. Visitors can freely walk through their brewery and with a casual appointment listen to a staff explain the process of traditional soy sauce production as well as its brief history. They don't charge you for this educational walkthrough at all. There's a shop near the exit of the brewery where you can buy some of those world-renowned soy sauces. Today I got myself a small bottle of Kuyo Murasaki. This is in the original form of soy sauce in Japan, described as tamari shoyu. And like I said earlier, it was discovered in the process of making a miso paste sometime around the 13th and 14th centuries. Kuyo Murasaki is also the one that won the Mond selection every year for 8 years by the way. I just tried it and it tastes amazing! So, I'll attempt to relay what I learned about the traditional soy sauce making in Japan. First, you boil the soybeans and mix them with roasted wheat, which begin fermenting shortly afterwards. Then you store the fermenting mix, called moromi, in huge cedar barrels. And you let it mature for about a year and a half. Yes, you heard me right, a year and a half. This is why it's called traditional soy sauce making, because in the modern era, companies use various techniques and tricks to accelerate the maturation, so that they don't have to wait that long. But, true to the roots, folks at USA show you keep it the old way and they do it so well that their expertise touches the taste buds of food experts in Europe and beyond. I was also told that these barrels are about 100 years old by the way. Then, when the maturation is more or less complete, you transfer the barrel's content to a squeezer and then the squeezing process kicks in and lasts for 4 days. Yes, 4 days, not 4 hours. And this is just talking about a third of the whole barrel's content because there's a limit to the amount the squeezer can handle at a time. This means you need 12 days to squeeze the entire barrel's moromi. After that, you store the liquid in barrels again and wait for 2 weeks until the residues and sediments sink down to the bottom so you can discard them. 
Then there will be some heat treatment to be applied, which is to prevent excessive maturation. And finally, you filter the sauce to remove any unwanted residues completely. All in all, the soy sauce is produced during the course of roughly two years at Yuasa Shoyu. Guys, I'm so impressed. I hope you are too. Next time I get a girlfriend, I'll slowly approach her during the course of at least two years, okay? And that's the end of the video. Please click like and subscribe if you're so kind. Thanks for watching. Bye.